Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about Builder Pattern. Builder Pattern is also a creational design pattern just like Factory Method or Abstract Factory Design Pattern. The main intent of this pattern is to simplify the construction of a complex object. That is the main goal of Builder Pattern. And the way you do that is you separate the construction of the object from the type or object itself, which means you don't use a new on the object to create it, but you use a separate builder itself to build the object. That's the whole idea of the Builder Pattern. Now let's consider a situation where we have this user object. If we have to go and create the user traditionally, we'll have a constructor and in the constructor we are going to take name we'll take the name age and address and we'll set all of them but what if you want to create the object in one situation with name another situation with age and other situation with address now the way to do it is well you can create three different constructor which makes the code well, a little bit ugly. And the other way is using some sort of default parameter. So you don't have to pass everything every time. This is also a little bit ugly and unintuitive. And if you allow set and get method on the property, essentially expose these three as properties and allow set, then you lose the immutability of the object. Meaning the object is not immutable itself because it is not created during the construction itself. So how do you do it? This is where you use builder pattern. In case of builder pattern, what we do is we create a builder class and the builder class is usually a class inside of the user class itself. And as I mentioned, because the builder class will be responsible for building, the user class have to have a private constructor. So first thing we are going to do is we're going to create private constructor for user. The next thing is we're going to create a class and this will be user builder. And in user builder, we can start with a constructor itself or without constructor. So what is the goal of the user builder? The main goal of the user builder is to build the user object. Now let's define an interface also for the user. So let's say public I user. For the timing, let's not implement any method or property. And here we have I user. Right now I'm keeping the interface and class in the same CS file, but this is not the right way to do, right way to keep them in their own file. But for the interest of time, I'm just doing this. Okay, so we have these three properties and let's expose these properties now. So we can have public string name return name and similarly we can have one for age and one for address and then what we can do is we can go and add these three properties to the interface so Okay, that's about it. Now our I user and user types are ready. Let's work on the builder. So as I said, the responsibility of the builder is to build the object. So inside of user builder, what we are going to do first is we're going to declare a private user user. And then we are going to have a constructor here. And in the constructor, we're going to say user equal to new user. And let's make this as read only. Then we want to build the user object now, which means the user object can be built only with name or age or address. So what we are going to do is the first method is going to be public and the return type is going to be user builder. And I'll explain in a minute why the return type will be user builder. And we'll say with name, string name, and here we'll say user.name. And given that this is an internal class 
of the user class, this internal class have access to the private member of the user. So here we can say user.name is equal to name. Well, this cannot be read only because we'll be creating the instance outside of the constructor. So, so we have with name and then we'll return this. The reason we are returning the user builder object or this current instance so that we can use Fluent API to build the object. And then similarly, let me just copy paste. We can have with age So we'll say age equal to age and finally we will have with address. With address. So now as you can see the user cannot be created outside without of the user builder. And when we do the user builder, we are just setting up the name. We have still not given the user object back to the caller. So for that, we are going to create a public user build. And here we are going to return the user object that we created. Now one thing to keep in mind is that as I mentioned one thing earlier is that if we make these properties as get and set we will lose immutability. Now as you can see we are not losing immutability because the name can be set only once with this builder so is for age and so is for address and after the object is built it's been returned from the type. It ensures that the object is immutable after it's been created. Now if we have to use this how we are going to use so let's say we want to create the user object and let's say we want to do it in startup and inject so we can say services dot at singleton and here we can say i user and then here we're going to say new and as you can see we cannot do new user because the user doesn't have a constructor so that's not going to work so what we're going to do is I'm going to do new user builder and then we can do with name if that is only the thing we want to create the object with. If we want to create the object only with age we can use with age or we can with use with address or if we want to create with multiple we can create with multiple with name dot with with address and then we can do build and this is going to return the user object and this is what is going to be added to the dependency injection container. Let me put them into the next line and as you can see this is how you can build the user using the user builder pretty easily. And you might have seen similar pattern. For example, if you go to program, you see the host create host builder. This one, you see that this returns a builder. And then we use that builder, call the build to get the I host. And then we run a method on top of it. Similarly here, we have a user builder, which is, which is responsible for building the user. And then you can provide different attribute during building and then finally use the build to build the user. In my experience, this is a pattern that you will not use on day-to-day -day basis. There are only few corner cases where this will be useful, but this definitely comes very handy in this kind of situation where you want to keep the immutability of an object. At the same time, you want to create the object with different set of attribute in different scenarios. So this covers how you can use builder pattern to build a complex object. In my example, this is not a complex object. It's a pretty simple, but you get the idea of how you can use builder pattern. And as you can see, creating an internal class inside of the original class gives this class access to all the private properties of the main class or the top level class. And this is how 
we can set all the properties and finally with the build we can return the object so this is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video